<clears throat> okay, um, good morning or uh, good afternoon, good evening, depends on uh, the part of the world you are. Uh, I am Mazi Chika Austin, and uh, of course, I'm here once again this evening to, uh, to have us talk about issues as in the globe, because uh, we owe ourselves that responsibility to discuss issues as they keep unveiling, make no mistake about that. And uh, we are talking about um, the place of media in modern world. The place of media in modern world. And that's all we're going to talk about um, this evening. You, why I have my own responsibility to uh, dish out my own understanding or my own contribution on the topic of discourse. You also own us responsibility to share this program as much as you can. Get it to across all world so that we enlighten and educate ourselves. Because what we need at this very time is information education, right education anyway, of course, because the concept of education is uh, misrepresented and misinterpreted in this part of the world. But we are talking about being exposed to the ideal education, the ideal information. And that is all we are going to be doing this evening. We are going to look at media from very complex perspectives. We are going to look at media, not just from its conventional meaning or its conventional perspective. Uh, we are going to look at media and the modern world from, you know, should I say, vicious circle dimension. That is, um, looking at it from conventional and unconventional perspectives. And it's going to help us so heavily for us to understand where we are and uh, the responsibilities before each and every one of us. And uh, super to this time, we, we are, you know, prepared for a time like this. Most of you don't appreciate the fact that there are two kinds of people currently living in this world. One are those who are futuristic. Who are these people? These are people who live in the future. And the other set of human beings are those who are living in the immediate world. And you must understand that those who are living in the future regulate the, activity. they regulate the activities of those who are living on today's world. So you must understand this. For the fact that these two classes of people those who are futuristic and those who are of the contemporary, in as much as they live in this world, those of the future have a very comparative advantage to rule the world. To rule the world. So, you see, as far back as 2013, uh, Mazen Namdekan understood the importance of, he understood what we call 
demetamorphosis or transition of international system from conventional mode to unconventional mode. I'm going to uh, try as much as to simplify everything we are discussing this evening so that everybody will be carried on. You see, because he falls among those who live in the future, as far back as a decade now, or almost a decade, a decade is 10 years, he was able to picture the future. He was able to transcend from the time he was to the time that he had not met physically and understood the importance of navigating towards the reality of the future time. And when others, who we are also called the Biafra artists, we are busy talking about building, a, building hostels, building houses, buying landed properties and all the rest of them. They've, because those guys were still believing in the primordial approach to freedom fight. They were still, you know, in, on the atmosphere of colloquial approaches in fighting for freedom. But Martin Namdekano was able to understand that the primordial method is no longer going to be feasible in the near future. So what he did was, he began to transit the minds of millions of their friends to the weapons of the future. Why others who are not mentally foreseen like him, we are busy buying cement, buying rocks, building houses, Thinking is all about gathering people in a very uh, old method. What Mazen Namdekanu did, he foresaw the future and he now began to build what we call digital community. He built a digital community. Why the rest we are building? Physical community. But he understood that the physical community in no distant time are not going to be effective. So he understood the importance of building digital community and he governized, he took advantage of that, you know, hyper-dimensional foresight. And guess what? It worked. So he was able to tell people the importance of the future tools to press for. And today, the digital community is a reality. Because one thing most of us don't understand is this. One of those things that are very strong in humanity is what we call evolution. And what is evolution? Evolution in a simple way means change. The world evolves. The world systems evolve. Everything about human relations evolve. The earth itself also undergoes evolution. So those who don't understand the reality of evolution always remain static in their approach. Why the smart guys transcend? They do what we call transition. They move from one point to another based on the reality of the time, not based on the dogmatism of their minds, like those who believe in statism or static, you know, approach. So this is what we are talking about this evening, so that we understand why the battle we have engaged is a winning war. Because people don't appreciate the efficacy the potentiality at our disposal. And that's why I think we must be properly guided. There is need for that. 
so that our people understand. Because one thing people don't understand, as in one of the disadvantages that can destroy people, no matter how powerful they are, is when they don't understand the potency of their weapons. You might have a weapon, but you don't understand its potency. It becomes a mere weaponless tool for you. So, Mazen and Amdekan took time to build this strong network of a people. And one amazing thing is this the digital community he built, which centers on the media web, comes across the seven continents of the world and even beyond. If you put a Biafran on a uh, spacecraft, he will be in the mass or the moon and be still be tweeting about Biafra. So it's beyond even ethnic affairs. For those of us who understand what I'm talking about. So he was able to build a digital community, understanding the dimension, the transition that the world is moving. For your information, one of the most popular, uh, uh, populous country in the world is Facebook. Most of you don't understand that. There is no country that is more populated than Facebook nation. Facebook is more populated than China. And imagine that you have a very reasonable influence on Facebook population. And one thing people don't understand about digital population is this. Digital population comes across ethnic lines. If I'm targeting, listen, if I'm targeting Chinese population, one of those things I'm going to consider, one, is linguistic factor, which is I have to go and expose myself to understanding and speaking of Mandarin. Also, I have to also look at the issue that interests interest Chinese population. That is the physical China I'm talking about. That is the biggest country on the world as far as demography is concerned, as far as population is concerned. But imagine I have another community that is more, uh, as in more populous than China, talking about Facebook, for instance. If I'm coming to Facebook to speak to such Facebook community, do you know that I don't need to be language-driven fellow? I can drop it on English. And it will reach out everyone, including a Chinese. A Chinese who is interested to know what I'm talking about have to make the use of translator, digital translator. That is how powerful the digital community we are talking about is. So this is what uh, Mazin Namdekano foresaw. About 10 years ago or 9 years ago, and began to work towards it. And that is where, uh, where strategy comes in. Because people don't understand the place of strategy. Strategy must come with time and the gradualism. Why, when people were thinking it was, you know, unachievable. He was busy buying time and facing things right. So, if you understand what we are talking about, for instance, Facebook alone, the current data of people on Facebook is 2.912 billion people. The current population of people on Facebook is 2 billion 912. 
You now understand what we are talking about. Oh, yeah, let's look at the population of China, which is which happens to be uh, uh, the largest country on earth. Let's see uh, the population of China, because we have gotten that the, the, the that number of people on Facebook, the the Facebook community have two billion nine hundred and twelve, and the population of China as of twenty twenty is one point four billion people. So that means the population of Facebook is times two the population of China. So if I have a reasonable presence on Facebook, if I, for instance, if I'm going to talk about Biafra on China, remember I'm going to concentrate to a people with a certain language. If I'm going to talk about the two point something, two point nine billion Facebook population, I don't need a whole of, I don't need to start looking at linguistic challenge. By the time I drop it, it moves. Now look at the statistics for you to understand why BBC, British government, everyone is fighting hard to see how to shut us down. In fact, as a matter of fact. There are two ways, but before that, let me not rush into issues so much so that I don't, I don't miss or digress a lot. Now, look at the statistics. China is the highest population on earth, and she has 1.4 billion people. Facebook is the highest digital populated country on earth. Facebook as a country has 2.9 billion people, almost 3 billion people. More than 100% more than addition to what China has. Now, if you look at Facebook community, it's a community that does not do what we call social stratification. Facebook does not divide the people based on ethnic ground. What it means is that if I, for instance, in my own personal Facebook account, I have a lot of people from the United States. I'm talking about white people from Israel, from a lot of parts of the world following me. Immediately I drop a message. It gets to everyone within my page. Now, look at one amazing thing that happens so that you understand why these guys are going mad. In my account, I have, uh, I have about 5,000 friends. That is the limit Facebook gives. Now, I have almost 25,000 followers. There are many of us who have close to 100 posts. But I'm just using my as a case study. There are people who have more than fact, times eight of what number of followers I have. Now, if I drop a, a, a comment, look at the statistics. If you if you add up my twenty five thousand followers, there about and twenty five sorry five thousand friends, that's about thirty thousand people that are already positioned to hear me. Now, look at what happens in this case. If I drop a message, and out of the 30,000 people, let me say 10% of that population are no longer active on social media, either as a, on Facebook, as a, either as a result of death, or as a result of financial hardship, or as a result of Fatigue, they are no longer interested. But yet, they, their names are still following you, their accounts are still following you. But some of them are no longer alive. Some of them, one or two things are maybe 10% is more. Well. And you drop that message. 25% out of the 30,000, let's say about 7,500 people shared that message. 
And out of these 7,005 people share this problem, for example, let's assume each one of them have 200, 200 people following. Times 200, times 200 by 7,500. This is a conservative uh, 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 statistics I'm putting on here. Conservative, I mean, is a very, I'm using a very limited figure here. So if, let's assume the 7,500 people that shared uh, the, 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 the program are now having 200 people. Each person is having 200 people. That gives you 150,000 people automatically. You are reaching up 150,000 people. So if I, as a single individual, a media world, was able to talk to people, reach out to 150,000 people on Biafra, and we have up to, for instance, 800,000 people who are also talking about the same Biafra, who also reach out on their individual scales, 150 people. So let's assume we times 150 by 800, so that you understand why these guys are mad, why they are going mad. It gives you, if you times it, you know, 150,000 times 800,000 people, which we are more than. I'm just using, um, okay, somebody has already given me a figure. It is about 1.5 million. In a day, Biafra is being planted in the minds of 1.5 million, or in an hour, because so many of us post more than 50 posts in a, in a in, even in some less than six hours. So you can see, when these guys sit down, when they sit down, the same thing is happening on Twitter, the same thing is happening on social, uh, Facebook and others. When they now sit down and see how the name Biafra is climbing, it becomes a disturbance. Now, let me tell you, everything that happens on every social media platform, please put, uh, put your ear down so that you understand what happens. Everything that happens on social media platform automatically goes to what we call Google Chamber. For those of us who have our phone here, you can uh, I know most you can use any of your search engine. I usually use Chrome. You can use any of your search engine. See what happens. If Biafra is frequently talked about on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and all the rest of them, where it falls back is on Google Chamber. What happens in Google, Ch Google Chamber? Google is programmed in a way that anything that is frequently talked about, it has a high proficiency of search result. I wish most of us would understand what I'm talking about. If people are talking more of Chica Austin, for instance, typing on Chica Austin on so, uh, social media platform, whether Instagram, whether YouTube, whether Facebook, whether Twitter, we call it. Google is programmed in a way that it gathers those frequent comments on that particular name, either Biafra or IPOD. Google do what we call it scouts those information and gathers it. So how you know the level at which people are talking about that is, is as said when you go to Google and you search for instance Biafra. This is what I'm doing. I wish you can show well. This is what I'm doing if you, if you search for Biafra. Now you go down to the Google, downward to the Google to know how many references it has. Because how frequent a particular thing is 
mentioned determines how frequent it will record on Google search. I don't understand me. I want to just see if I can show us instance here so that we understand how it works. So it, it automatically goes to Google search and build up series of references on that particular topic. For instance, I have searched for Biafra here. I'm getting more than 2 million references. So those references we are coming as a result of this, we are talking about this Biafra. And there's no way they can manipulate it because it's a very difficult task to, to do. And it gives them worry that when they go to Google search, they discover that this particular word, for instance, Biafra, becomes a you know a pile of references. It has a chain of references, and at that moment you see them getting worried, getting agitated. So that is on its own part. That is on its own part. Also, when they Go to Twitter. There's something that is currently happening, and uh, I, I will also bring our attention to, to that. You see, as it currently stands, every government on, on, of the world is feeling panic over non-state actors or non-state groups influencing the media space. Every government in the world. There's something that is going on. Every country of the world is establishing what we call disinformation center. Later you can go and Google it. That is it's happening in the United States. The Republicans are fighting against it. It's happening in the UK. Everyone, the big techs Everybody is setting up a platform. They call it disinformation center. What is disinformation? Whenever they discovered that those who are not under their control, this is what every government on the earth is doing correctly. It's a secret project that is going on. What they are doing is that they have discovered that there are a lot of groups they are not in control of. And these people seem to have gathered a lot of reasonable space on social media. So in order to suppress these people, they want to tag anything they come up as disinformation. Not misinformation, rather disinformation. And that is what they are trying to promote. That is a philosophy they are trying to internationalize. But God knows how far they can go. So, over to what we are seeing happening today. It looks who is who in the media world is busy or being contracted, uh, you know, to fight IPOB. But one thing I think every Biafran should be you know, critical about is this. We have taken a position. We have made what we call strategic positioning. As far as media is concerned, we have taken the right media position, which is the social media. Now, these guys have realized that they cannot match us on that space. They understand that we have taking a very reasonable position, unmatchable positions. They understand that they cannot afford recruiting a matchable number of people to remain consistently, firing consistently on this place. They don't have what it takes because they have tried in the past to hire some individuals. Most of you don't understand a lot of things happening behind cameras. 
Some of us were approached to sell out our platforms. I was also approached to hand over my platform, and big offers were made. In fact, there is nobody who has over 10,000 people as followers that will say he or she, that is in this struggle that will say he or she has never been consulted. Because they understand that they cannot recruit a matchable figure. So they came with a strategy of liquidation. That's what we call liquidation. You can, the easiest way to win your enemy is either you set up a strong competing, sorry, a strong competing, uh, you know, a strong competing force against your enemy, or you do what we call liquidating. For example, what, what is currently happening in the United States, the Republicans understood that if they want to set up a social media that will counter Facebook and Twitter, it would be a problem for them. So what they did was to start liquidating what the Democrats have taken advantage of. Elon Musk, you're seeing, is heavily funded by the Republican rich people who told him, go and buy it off. So there are two ways you can, you can suppress an enemy. Either by setting up a counter platform or you liquidate. So what, what these guys have realized that they cannot successfully set up a counter platform against us because we have already developed what we call culture of assimilation. We have assimilated, we have integrated. Most of us cannot survive without tweeting or posting something on Facebook on a day. It is not a norm. So for them to group people who we see it as a culture, it will take a whole lot of years. And they don't have that time on themselves because we are causing a lot of damages on them. So what they lack in was to do what we call liquidation. What Republicans are doing Democrats now by trying to buy off what Democrats established is called liquidation. So what they did to so many of us, they came to some of us, to many of us, and they said, you know, uh, okay, for instance, Chica Austin, we are going to fund you, we are going to give you a, give you more promotion, we are going to shoot you up, we are going to give you a lot of equipment, all we want is for you to make us admit in your own account. And do you know what happens? When you make them admin, after they have offered you money, you wake up in the morning and discover that you have been removed. And that is your, the end of your control of that platform. That's what they did a lot. There are some of these guys you see who were with us and they are today attacking the struggle. They are not the ones posting those things again. Rather, they gave way in the name of make us admin uh, and we're going to offer you this. And they thought they were still going to be controlled. So many of them are no longer, they cannot log in. They cannot log into the accounts. They will tell you, my account has been hijacked. So many of them are not sincere with the truth. Nobody hijacked the account. They sold the accounts. A lot of us were approached with heavy money. When I mean money, I mean wait, weightier money. But we, because we understood where we are going to, because we understood the man who have given all everything up for our own good, we said no. So because they came with the liquidation and they discovered that those they successfully liquidated or backed up are not even up to 10% of the people they need to liquidate for. And that is where the problem lies. Because one thing people don't understand about IPOB Media Chamber is this. IPOB Media Chamber is not made, made up of experts. Rather, it is made up of volunteers. There are people 
If you classify IPOB media chambers, you will understand how it works. In fact, I don't need to even share some of the sensitive information. But you should understand that it's not everyone. There are those whose business is to share. They are media warriors, but they can never construct any, any statement. They have no business of posting any word of their own. But anything you posted, that's what I said, yeah, they will share it and share it and share it. The devil reads about it. There are, these are also another wing of media. So if you buy those who are posting, how do you also buy those who are sharing? And there are those whose business is to make sure they like it. They don't care, they don't, they don't even read what you have posted, they just like it. As far as they see something that looks like BA, BA has come, don't put frag. As far as BA has come, they saw a whole oh, BA frag on it, they wish, like it. And they run in millions of people. So, <laughs> when you understand that passion, is what is driving this course, then you will respect and understand that there is nothing any mortal can do. Absolutely nothing any mortal can do. So they are not coming up with the idea that they just need to clamp down on us by tagging us this information platform. But let me say this. A few years ago, we are called online countries, if I'm not mistaken. A few years ago, we are mocked, maligned, and called online countries. Some people laughed at us. Some people just laugh at us. They say they are online, making noise online. How come about online country is not turning out to be BBC area of concentration by calling it media world. This is one thing you see. I always tell people, I always tell people, consistency has never disappointed anyone in the history of it. Consistency has never failed anyone as far as historical antecedent is concerned. I tell you the truth. You see, because we are consistent, they have done the word of online country, they are now calling us the so-called media, media world. And I love the documentary BBC Ram. I must tell you, where they were able to acknowledge our geographical spread, they were able to, you know, Acknowledge the fact that we construct news according to our own, just the way it happened. You see, the world, we are gradually, as a people, being conscious of how the world is wrong. And I believe if there is anything that is delaying the restoration of Biafra, it's going to the fact that Elohim wants us to be mentally prepared so that we can value the country he's handing over to us. Because with the caliber of people I'm seeing, believe you me, <laughs> we can promote Biafra overnight that people will be boarding flight, coming for tourism, thinking <laughs> it is now the heaven they talked about in this picture. And I believe God is busy building up a mindset in us, a right mindset. So, um, there are a funny storyline BBC took up by trying to, you know, say we are portraying a speech, putting some funny, funny voice and the visual records, coupling them without them understanding these are stage we are through it quite a long time. I tell you the truth. So what are they worried of? 
What are they finding? The question you would have asked yourself, we won't say the question. Why is it that 10 months after the kidnapping of Mazin and Mekano, people are still panicking, people are still feeling threatened that IPOB is still standing strong? They are now coming to the realization that what Nnamdi Kanu did was to build an institution. The difference between institution and a kingdom is this. In institution, when the head is not there, the business of the institution keeps running. And Mazen Namdekano was so smart, he understood where he was going. That's why I, tell, I keep telling people, I said, why I have never identified with the rest of them, saying they are pursuing, uh, pursuing for driver is because, for Biafra is because they are mentally poor. Unlike Mazen Namdekano. These guys don't even know. The rest of them are just a bunch of local players who don't even understand anything about how the world is. Namikano built an institution so that whether he's there or not, the heat will keep on floating. That is, that is what leadership is all about. That is what consolidation is all about. And today, BBC is panicking. Why are they panicking? Because they have come to the realization that IPOB has not only penetrated the minds of our people, but has gone beyond to reaching out to the minds of other Nigerians. And the current moving down to African minds. And that is what some of you don't understand. We ran a program in Pan-Africanist Radio. Most of you never followed that. Pan-Africanist uh, is, is a South African uh, platform. You know, it's, it's based in South Africa, but it's an AU platform. Now, what happened? The Pan Africanist movement approached leadership and said to them, You guys are really making a lot of influence. Because they are listening. One thing most people don't understand is that just allow whoever that wants to laugh you to laugh you. Be result oriented, the end justifies the peace. That is just the way it is. So this group said to leadership that. We have been watching you people and discover that you guys have a lot of influence. This is a South African based movement, but it's a, it's a pan Africanist movement, and they, they work with a African Union. And there was an understanding between them and the leadership for us to have a program to discuss to. African use on that through that platform. But I was one of the guests on the platform. I remember that I was one of the speakers. And after that program, a lot of African youth from Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Congo Brazzaville, Congo. After the program, a lot of sorry for the after the program on Pan African platform, which I was one of the speakers, uh, Mazi Kechku was there, and uh, so many of us were all there. And it was uh, also later played on Radio Biafra. So after the program, a lot of African youth were calling from Zambia, Congo, Kinshasa, um, a lot of African countries, and they were saying, we have this kind of African use. We have this kind of intelligent 
We can trust, trust our product with two time to educate both the platform and her followers the necessity for Biafra. But we make them to understand that no African Renaissance without Biafra. No African Industrial Revolution without Biafra. And why those programs we are going on? Why the program was going on? The world was also listening because it was the, the platform was a new platform. And I believe British was also listening. BBC was list, was also listening. June after the program, in order to mess our level of penetration in the minds of this African brethren, BBC began to couple a very funny documentary. What you just saw. Now, let me not tell you how media works. Because BBC target was not Nigerian use. Because BBC target was not Igbo use. If their target, of course, not when I talk about BBC, you should know it's all about British policy or British propaganda channel. Because they were they, they, they saw what we did in Pan-Africanist platform. In, in which has a, a understanding with a they were they were feeling so distraught so all the last that was last month the program was held last month or last two months they began to panic because they felt we have stayed up the regional two more they never targeted to work on Biafran population. Because if they had, they would have allowed BBC to do the documentary and play only on BBC. That was not their target. Their target was not even Nigeria. If it were to be Nigerian population, they would have allowed it to be prepared by BBC Pigeon English. But because they wanted to counter us on the international stage because of what we did in Pan-Africanist platform, they now did it on BBC News. BBC News addresses is a global platform for BBC. Because if they were, they were trying to give us a domestic media war, they would have said, okay, BBC, will you do this documentary and play it for the Igbo audience? Or BBC, Pigeon English, you do it. They would have limited it to Nigerian audience. But they felt they need to destroy what we have done in the minds of, of our African brethren who were listening because the program was playing and it was simultaneously interpreted in France, in, sorry, in French and English. While we are speaking in English, there was automatic translation on French because the Francophonian African brethren were also listening. So the British, the British government began to feel so panic that these guys seem to be radical in our approach, and they coupled that uh, Senegal targeted at destroying them. But do you know what happened? As the Lord might do his own thing, they released the news in the morning, in the afternoon, the Sokoto boys destroyed the news. Because it could have taken us a whole lot of work to start destroying. In fact, there are people who have said, ah, BBC has finished this. Before. But as the Lord might have it, their bullets were shot in the morning. In the afternoon, the Alamajiris in Sokoto gave a counter bullet against what BBC attempted doing. See, People don't understand how God works. 
And it happens that the sound of Sokoto boy's bullet became so loud that it swallowed the sound of BBC bullet. And today, they are struggling to recover. They don't even know whether to pull out the news and wait when everything comes down for them to republish. That is what they are struggling currently. From a reliable information. Because the money spent, the time spent, the resources spent in reaching out to those they, they reached out to in order to gather those documentaries. They spent hugely in terms of time, in terms of human resources, in terms of financial resources. And they felt that that would have given us a very serious court. But as God may have it, the wind from Sokoto scattered and battered everything. That today, you cannot even, when you were talking about the BBC thing, you know what? In fact, when you publish it, people will start insulting you and be telling you that let's discuss the, the Sokoto boys' music down, nice and BBC stuff. So you can now understand. You cannot understand where we are. Because some persons believe that this is on Africa. That IPOB is adopting on African approach. But they believe that Africans feel intimidated. They feel inferior. They cannot challenge anything before them. That is the mindset. Very deeply racist mentality. And that's why they described us as so-called media world. That is how they describe us. So-called media world. Because in the modern history of media, it is only the Biafrans that have gathered themselves under one centrality of command and championed a media front. There is no race on earth. Put me wrong if you have any there's no race or group that has done such mobilization and remember our mobilization is beyond a particular continent we mobilize from all facets of life and it's really a disturbance to them they feel that how can such thing come out from africans how can a man with a black skin be so organized to, to manipulate and take control of media space. To them, they believe they, they, they should own it. They should tell us what they want us to hear, and we should act what they want us to act. That is their mindset. Very retrograde. And of course, derogatory, so to say. So they felt that for these people to be so organized on media, to be so centralized on media, that if nothing is done, that we are going to pass the system to other parts of Africa. And that is what they're afraid of. So they felt, you see, they are gradually moving to an Africanist platform, indirectly speaking to the rest of Africa, that if care is not taken, that we are going to introduce our system to the deflated rest of Africans. That is what they are afraid of. And to them, the best thing to do is to activate states heavily state-sponsored and funded propaganda. But it never lasted. It never lasted. Because somehow, divinity took control over humanity. And everything became a flaw. So what am I trying to say? we must understand that we have something that we must not ever ever let anyone 
to compete with us on that stage or have an edge over us. Because if we do, we are ruined as a people. We are just gone as a people. If we allow this one we have, this one we have advantage of, if we allow we slip off our hands, we are gone. In fact, as a matter of fact, BBC made us understand that they have been secretly approaching to Facebook to wipe out a lot of accounts of so many of us. And most of you don't understand. They have been secretly lobbying that a lot of us, our accounts should be totally wiped out of Facebook so that we start again. And Facebook said to them, we cannot do it. Do you know why? Remember some time ago in the United States, IPOB had taken a protest to Facebook and they even took Facebook to court. And Facebook understands the people they are dealing with. We are not faceless. Of course, we are in your court. We are appearing to court. No terrorists, or if, if we are terrorists, we can't be appearing in court. Can, have, have you ever seen a Qaeda sending legal representatives to United States court? Or Ashada of Somalia sending legal representatives in Somalian court? Or have you seen a, a Hamas sending lawyers to courts in Israel? Or has one of Lebanon sending legal representatives in, uh, in Lebanese court? Or have you ever seen the Fulani terrorist group sending a legal representative? They cannot. So, IPOB is not a terrorist organization because we challenge every irrational behaviors against us. We call you to order for you to explain to us the local standing at which you are taking that decision on us. Because we are the people. We represent the people. And the choice of the people. And we are not naive. We are not these crimes. In fact, to the best of my knowledge, we are so in doubt that one can just say these are just acumen. Nothing short of that. So if people don't understand what they have, when they lose it, they will bleed. I tell you the truth. So irrespective of uh, 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 what They are trying to do. They are trying to shut us down. But as a matter of fact, we are entering to a new era in the world, and I want everybody to be strong. We are entering into a new era of the world. With what is happening in the United States currently, you can believe me that those who believe they could take over the world are beginning to struggle. Take note of that. There is a secret revolution happening right now that the neoliberal elements have been overthrown and that is coming up from the United States and that's why each and every one of us must understand international politics, must understand international development because the Biafra we are seeking for is going to be a global player Yes, she's going to be a global play player. That which is obtainable in, on international...
Sorry, sorry for that. So, what am I trying to say? We must not joke with what we have. Because that is what we have in our disposal. Biafra is not just going to be like most African countries that are not engaging and contributing in all forms of international state. Biafra is going to be highly engaging. Do you know, for most of people who don't understand, BBC is a platform for British foreign policy enhancement. That is a very decent way to describe what BBC is. BBC is created for enhancement of British government foreign policy, nothing less, nothing more. Sorry, the it looks they are trying to stop the program but let's see if we can finish up well trust this map Oh, sorry. So what I'm trying to say, BBC is a, a channel of advancement of British foreign policy. Sorry, they, they, are, they, they, they I don't know. They are trying to see if they can cut up. But we'll finish up well. We we'll promise that for ourselves. So let me end by saying this. So BBC is a British broadcasting corporation. Till tomorrow is owned and funded by British government. With what purpose? For enhancement and advancement of British foreign policy all over the world. Just the way in the United States, you have United States Voice of America. What does Voice of America also do? Voice of America is for enhancement and advancement of American foreign policy. When you come to France, they have their own to call France 24. The same way, to do that which France wants overseas, to, in fact, to, to, to promote anything France. In Russia, they have their own Aruti. For those of you who have seen uh, media house reading Aruti, Aruti is a Russian state-owned media house. In Germany, they have their own DW is also created to enhance German foreign policy. The same way in China and all the rest of them. Just like, just like the way we have it in Nigeria, NTA. To make sure Nigeria issue is promoted. That's why even though Nigeria is morning, NTA will show you a Gango fishing festival. Even though Nigeria is morning, they will be showing where people are fishing in a Gangu fishing festival and dancing. And you wonder what is happening. Are there not uh, these things happening all over the world? Anything will show you either where people are harvesting corn or where people are doing fishing festival. All those things are 
the way the system works. Just like when people say uh, religion, states also own religion. States also own religion. There is no country today that that religion is under, under control of the state. If you come to, if you come to, for instance, uh, for those of you who who started with Catholic or Catholicism, Catholicism started from Italy, and everything got in from the. Uh, uh, got it from the offering and the what have you, we are all sent to Italy. And the, the English people say, no, we can't take it any longer. People cannot make offering in England and it will be sent to Rome. We will never take it. They form their own known as Anglo Church, which you call Anglican, means English communion. And uh, I think. Uh, and, and the word Anglo is a prefix. Yes, they said we cannot take it. They form their own known as English church, Anglican church, because they don't want offering. And they want a religious system they can control. The state can tell people what they want the people to hear. And when Americans understand the importance of religion, Americans say, no, we are not going to also adopt Catholicism or English church. America formed their own, known as Protestants. They were protesting. They were protesting against Italian church, which is the Roman Catholic, and the Anglo church, which is Anglican. Americans say, no, we don't also want to be exporting our wealth to Rome or England. They, found, they said they are only protesters. They were protesting. And they took a lot of things and made some changes. The Russians said, no, we are not also going to be allowing our people to be taking wealth or people from Rome controlling our people. And Russia form their own, they call it Orthodox Church. Go and make a finding. Russians have what you call Orthodox Christians, Orthodox Church, independent of their own. Because they don't want any anybody from England to control them or control their resources, or anyone from uh, Rome to control, or anyone from America in the name of Protestants. Yes. So you should understand that that is how the world is structured. Either you understand it and survive, or you live in illusion that it is not real and die with your illusion. So media platforms all over the world and for interest purposes, know this and have peace. Know it and have peace. Is for interest purposes, nothing more, nothing less. And you should also understand that you, as a media fellow in this room, you should also serve an interest. And what is that interest? The Biafran interest. If we relegate from that responsibility, you are on your own. It's as simple as that. We have the responsibility to the we have a responsibility to the motherland. And that responsibility is to use all we have to speak for our own well-being. It's a responsibility. And remember. Any responsibility that is not costly is no longer a responsibility. A responsibility must be demanded. Any responsibility that is not demanded, that is not costly, believe you me, is a house. That is just as the way it is. 
our leader is passing through experiences he's passing through. Do you think he doesn't like comfort? Or do you think he cannot make a deal and walk away? Because he understands that it's a responsibility he owes to his motherland. So we must understand that we are indeed making headways. Of course, let nobody intimidate you out of this place you have a comparative advantage, which is the media space. Let nobody intimidate you. Let nobody harass you out of it. We must project the image of the Afro. It is our responsibility. Nobody should criminalize that. And of course, it is a passionate drive. People should understand that. So, that is just it. As far as social media is concerned, we are unbeaten. As far as social media is concerned, we have our headwinds, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Most of you never knew what happened during the Twitter era, and it's very, very important to share with you. You know, when they suspended street operation in Nigeria, most of you never knew what happened. In fact, it became a concern in the United States. You know what happened? When they suspended uh, Twitter here in, in Nigeria, a lot of our media warders at home began to use VPN. And over 98% of them using VPN were using United States as location in order to have access to Twitter, in order for them to tweet. And because there were many on Twitter space using US location, do you know what happened? Biafra began to trend in UK Twitter because the location was US. So what was highly discussed on US Twitter space will be the trending topic. And often, almost every day, Biafra was coming either third, fourth, second, third, fourth, on youth, on US street uh, trending topics. Guess what? The American government was worried. And they told everyone concerned, the Nigerian government, that there's nothing you can do about this. That these guys have channel their locations with the VPN towards US and our own space seem to have been overtaken by them. It was, it was a, I'm telling you a reality that happened. That is how crazy we are as a people. <laughs> that is how legion we are in size. So you now understand what we're talking about. You now understand how strong our strength base when it comes to advancing this cause. So let nobody try to like the BBC is a so-called very derogatory, and I understand. That statement came out of racist too. It came out of racist too. So we must remain strong. We must remain strong. We must remain committed. Why? Because if we don't speak out, Without us doing this, nobody can do it for us. 
to be honest with you. Without us doing it, telling our stories, nobody can do it for us. So with that, we come to the end of uh, this evening program. I want to thank every single one of us who dedicated his or her own time and years for us. I want to say thank you a million times and remember us.